Okay, so now that we've learned a little bit about how CRISPR works, let's talk about some of the different societal views that kind of come up when we're talking about using this um, gene replacement um, technology. So I'm going to uh, give you guys each a reading. You might have to partner up. I didn't make enough copies for everyone. There you are. There you go. So we're going to break into our groups. We are going to um, go through this reading. And I want you to kind of imagine that perspective. I want you to put yourself in the perspective that that article is giving you. After you guys finish doing the reading, um, we'll come together and um, discuss our perspectives in a town hall uh, format. So, um, while you're going through the reading, you'll notice that there's a second sheet that I gave each of you. Um, it's a graphic organizer. So I want you to kind of fill out the different sections. It includes um, what the main idea of the article is, whose perspective the article is uh, talking from, and I want you guys to think of why these ideas are important, okay? So let's go through the readings, and uh, I'll give you guys some time to go through them. So while you guys are reading this article, I want you guys to be considering um, from the perspective in the article whether this technology should be allowed in Alberta. So whether we should be using this technology in Alberta. Remember, we're using our perspectives from the article. We're not using our own perspectives or our own opinions.
just to check in. Are you guys almost done reading the articles? Cool, you're done? <laughs> almost there. I know some of them are a little bit longer than the others. I apologize. David, have you finished reading? Yep. Okay. Let you guys know if you have any questions about the graphic organizer. It should be a familiar format. We've used it in class before, but I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Make sure when you're coming up with whether this, your argument as to whether this technology should be used in Alberta or not, you're using things from the article. So you have to be able to back up your answer with um, things that you read in that article. Do we still need a few more minutes to finish up? Mm -hmm. Need a few more minutes? Uh, I think I'm good. Okay. Do you know where this came from? Yes, it came from um, like a magazine? Oh, I didn't put it, there. it came from a news article. Um, I have the sources on a different sheet, um, but all of them came from uh, reputable sources. Mm. We can't progress in society. I know yours has a very interesting perspective. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you guys just a couple more seconds to finish up. Is that okay?
Okay, so town hall meeting. We're all going to have our voices heard. We're going to have this be a respectful meeting, so no talking over each other. We're going to let one person talk at a time, and then we'll have some opportunity once everyone has gone to voice their concerns. Um, we will have the opportunity to kind of get into a discussion um, where you can draw on points that each other has made. All right, so who wants to start this discussion? All right, Cole, what so, was your perspective? So my group had the gene therapy treatment of hereditary blindness. So uh, in this article, it outlines how gene therapy is being used to, uh, I don't know if it's treat or alleviate a rare retinal disorder. It's called Leber's congenital amaurosis or LCA. So the gene therapy um, is injected through a virus into the people's eye and their vision, which is caused by a, a mutation. is it's, it's made better. I, just, I don't know. I'm losing my words right now. But uh, yeah, so it's rare in the U.S. or in the U.S. There's about two thousand people that have it, but there's a lot of rare disorders like this that are affecting people. Okay. And it, the article argues that it marks an, a new stage in the medicine. Okay, so are you saying that it should be used? So yeah, uh, from this perspective, it is very, it's, it's a useful uh, area to explore for science, healthcare, maybe the government and the general, or the US citizens of the American article. And uh, it can alleviate mutation, or uh, genetic issues of mutations that are causing health problems. So it's good for healthcare, it might give you longer lives or a better life. Okay. Sounds good. So you're saying that because of the benefits of this technology, it's alleviating people's yep. um, genetic um, disorders. We should allow this technology. It's improving people's lives. Is that I think a so, yeah. fair paraphrase? Yep. Okay. Who wants to go next? Okay, David, what was your perspective? So uh, apparently there's people that are using this for nefarious reasons to make weapons of mass destruction that could wipe out the whole population of the U.S. <laughs> overnight. Okay. So it shouldn't be used, it should be banned. Okay, and so what were some of the things in the article that, um, some of the evidence um, but, that you're gonna support? Uh, the there was a spy from the U.S. government who said that this was gonna happen, so it's gonna happen. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, do you have anything else you wanna add? Um, I mean, it's pretty compelling evidence here. <laughs> I don't know why you would want to use it. Fair enough. So you're saying because this technology could be used for... Um, weapons of mass destruction. Yes. Because this technology could be used for weapons of mass destruction, it definitely shouldn't be allowed in Alberta. Is that fair? Yeah. Am I no. getting that right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> what were your guys' perspective? So this is kind of the perspective of either like a, kind of a random citizen or like some like Catholic church kind of thing, um, talking about mainly focusing on kids and embryos, um, and how if we use this technology in certain ways, um, we could lean more towards genetics and you know killing off certain. Or yeah, there you go, eugenics. Sorry, my brain's not working. Um, killing off certain, I don't know embryos before they're born because they don't have the best uh, genetic qualities and then specifically genetically engineering superior people. So then that gets into uh, the conflict of do pe like would the government own some people if they were genetically modified? Uh, do parents own their children because they got to choose who they were and they kind of picked, you know, went to the shopping mall and picked the perfect kid off the shelf? Um, are they resources? Are they just are some people superior to other people? Um, I compared it to a movie I watched called Gattaca, okay. which is where this actually happens. It kind of explores the whole idea yeah. um, and the ostracization of people who are inferior genetically. So, um, yeah, ethically, it's just basically we haven't really considered all the options in order to use it in such a widespread way yet. Okay. So, should this technology be allowed in Alberta? No, not yet. Okay. So it sounds like you guys are saying it should be allowed because of all of the kind of ethical concerns that we haven't really fully discussed as a society yet. There's too many unanswered questions. We need to figure this stuff out before we use this technology. Okay, so does anyone have anything to say in response to the other perspectives? So do you have, Cole, do you have anything to say in response to these kind of concerns that these guys are bringing up? 
But I think if in the hands of the right people, it could be used for good. And so I think that it should be explored. And also, if we don't explore it, then we're, we're holding ourselves back just because of ethics, which science doesn't always do. Okay. Okay. Do you guys have anything else you want to add? Is there a way to regulate if it's used for good or not? Like, I don't like dynamite or tear gas, like certain things that are developed and then used in war and are the reason that millions of people are dead. So something kind of David was touching on, this whole idea of this technology is supposed to be helping people and here there's... Was, uh, was the, were they the fertilizers that were used for that though? Isn't that what chlorine gas is? Is some kind of a fertilizer, I believe? I think. That I'm not sure. It might be. I think it had some some parts of uh, fertilizer. So okay. if you look at that, there's a there's a flip side where it could be feeding other people. It could be making people's lives better. But there's always a flip side to everything. Exactly. So, so why so why 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 are we saying no to this if there's a flip side to this, but there's a flip side to everything else? We didn't say no outright. We said that there needs to be a conversation around it and rules set down so that it does not become used, let's say like David is saying it would be used. But they could say the same thing about nuclear bombs, but we still use fusion for power in Ontario. Mm -hmm. And so what happens if we decide as a society here in Alberta that we're going to have all of these regulations in place? Do those regulations necessarily mean, or does that necessarily mean that those regulations are going to be happening in other places of the world that have access to this technology? What are some of the concerns that could come up because of this, not necessarily to the doomsday um, weapons of mass destruction, but what other sorts of things could come up, come up from that, yeah? You can think of people that rigging, are using this to rig the Olympics so that you have like super athletes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. point. So we've heard a bunch of different perspectives. Um, what do you guys think some of the challenges are when deciding to use a new technology like this? Competition. We talked about how it's not used in the U.S. right now, but it's used in China. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, cool. The ethical line is very muddy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's lots of really tough questions to answer, hey? So, um, is there an easy answer to a question like this? Why not? It's just 10 million different sides to the story. Exactly, yeah. There's lots of different perspectives. There's lots of um, equally valid um, thoughts on the use of this technology. Um, and it kind of gets messy when you get into um, when it should be used, how it should be used, how it's going to be regulated, and all sorts of uh, all of those sorts of questions. Uh, so, just um, kind of curiosity's sake, did anyone's personal perspective change? Um, we kind of learned about this technology briefly earlier. Did anyone's personal opinion change after um, reading the article that they were assigned? No. Not from my article, but we're usually presented with the positive light of science, but we don't usually explore the negative light in like lectures. But hearing my other compatriots, there's a different <laughs> side to the story that I wouldn't have considered from reading my article or hearing your, the talk that was given. Yeah, it's kind of interesting hearing other perspectives that you may not have considered. It definitely makes the issue a lot more complex than the kind of black and white thinking that we typically go into an issue with, that kind of mindset. Um, so at, we're ending our lecture for today. Before you guys go, I want you to fill out um, a 3 to one assessment. So I want you guys to write down three things that you learned from today's lecture, two things that you found interesting from today's lecture, and one question you still have. So I want you guys to kind of um, think about these three things, and then we will um, reflect them at the end. All right, thank you for participating, guys. <laughs>